Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be making Cinnabons. As requested last episode by the emissaries of the abstract concept of cooking. So, I looked at the recipe, and it's all complicated. I've never made anything so complicated before. I don't know how this is going to go. So, let's go do that. I just wanted to mention that there are so many ingredients that I'm going to have to split them up by thing they are ingredients for. So we've got dough, we've got glaze, we've got cinnamon filling. Alright, back to the ingredients part. Okay, so number one for the dough we are going to need milk, flour, two eggs, salt, granulated sugar, butter, and some active dry yeast. On to the cinnamon filling. All right, for the cinnamon filling, we are gonna need cinnamon, nutmeg, butter, and of course we need some sugar. Uh, the recipe calls for brown sugar, which usually means light brown sugar. I tend to use dark brown sugar, because I don't know if any of you have tried to work with light brown sugar before, but it tends to stick together like bricks. It's very irritating. So today we're gonna be using dark brown sugar. Okay, on to the creamy filling. No, it's not filling. It's frosting. I guess. It's, it's called a glaze. Is that frosting? Most of the Cinnabons that I've had have had frosting on them. But this one has cream cheese, which does not make me excited to eat this. Because I don't like cheese in my desserts. Alright, sorry. Back onto the, onto the glaze. Okay, we are going to need cream cheese, butter, because of course this recipe is just absolutely bursting with butter. Powdered sugar. Wait, that's backwards. Powdered sugar, vanilla extract, I think that's it. Alright, so the first step is apparently to scald some milk. Which means that we're gonna we're gonna put the milk in the saucepan and then it's gonna boil and then actually wait, I haven't measured the milk. How much milk is in here? How much is a pint? How many cups are in a pint? This is really becoming a theme on this show. I just don't know how to math. Okay, uh, apparently it's approximately two cups in a pint, so I'm gonna put in like half of the bottle. Ah! Is that half? Now we wait. There's been an interesting development, dear viewers. But let me see if I can zoom in. Maybe you can see. There's sort of like, oop. Eh, there you go, you can kind of see. There's like a frothy film over the milk. So, that's interesting. But I don't think it's boiling yet. Dear viewers, the milk is bubbling over. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that means, ah, it's fogging up the camera. I'm gonna assume that means boiling. So I have to go and put this uh, in a bowl. I can't take you with me, I'm sorry. Okay, the next step is apparently I have to put my finger in there to see if it's lukewarm. So, here we go. It is not. It is still hot. It. Okay. It said if it was, uh, if it was, it said if it was lukewarm to put in some flour. So, I'm gonna do that. Ooh, sorry. Okay, let's, let's try again. Maybe this time will be different. Ow! Ah! Yeah, it's still hot. We're gonna just let it mix for a little more. Let's just, ow! Okay, one more time. Maybe this time will be different. Uh, I don't know, it's still kinda hot. Ugh! Incredibly frustrating, dear viewers. It's not getting cool! Okay, maybe this time, maybe this time, viewers, it'll be different. It'll be room temperature. Let's see. Ooh, it is room temperature. Ew! Okay, I'm back. Alright, the, the reason that it really needs to be room temperature, and I've been a little bit nervous about it, is that this is yeast. And the yeast. There's like this big warning in the recipe that's like, hot milk will kill the yeast. 
Don't put it in hot milk. So this is two and a half teaspoons of uh, yeast and we're going to put it in here. And maybe mix it in a little bit. And then we are going to let it rise for, oh, the camera's out of focus. Whatever. We're going to let it rise for 10 minutes. That's what the recipe says. So I will see you all in 10 minutes, or you'll see me anyway. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and it's not seeming to be very foamy. So, I don't know what to do. I've never worked with yeast before. Maybe we could let it sit for like another, I'm gonna let it sit for like maybe three more minutes. Let's do that, three more minutes. It looks awful. Ah, okay, I mean, three minutes really does not seem to have made any difference. It still looks gross, it's not really bubbly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the next step and hope that nothing terrible happens. The next step is to add some more ingredients, so Let's do that. We need to add four cups of flour. Now, the uh, recipe actually says four cups and up of flour, which means somewhere between four cups and an infinite amount of flour, which I really don't like. Really irritates me. Okay, what, what's the next ingredient? All right, next we have to put in the two eggs and two teaspoons of salt. Now, the next thing we're supposed to do is put a bread hook on the mixer. So I've taken the whisk off of the mixer. And I didn't really know what a bread hook was, but fear not. I asked disembodied mom and she said we have one, which is uh, this thing. It's a ceramic hook. So, Go. Now we mix. Ah! Okay, that seems good. What's the next step? Let me go look. Okay, I'm actually supposed to let it run for 10 minutes, so let's do that. take this out of the mixer. Ow! Oh, it's hot. I'm not actually joking, you guys. It's stuck. <laughs> well, uh, viewers, disembodied mom has come to the rescue once again. We're putting uh, ice in the bowl to see if it'll shrink and then maybe be relinquished from the clutches of the mixer. So, we'll see how that goes. Hello again, everybody. So, it's been about an hour since I last filmed what was going on. So, let me just give you an update. Uh, due to an incident that may have involved me dumping an entire bowl of water on myself on the floor, the, uh, the bowl has been released from its, the clutches of the mixer. So that's good. Uh, we proved the dough so it's bigger now. I was a little worried that it wasn't gonna work because the yeast wasn't looking so great when we did that part. But now we're on to the cinnamon filling. So let's go do that. All right, so first things first, we're gonna need to put in a half cup of butter. One cup of dark brown sugar. Two and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. And a 
and three quarters uh, tablespoon or wait, teaspoons or tablespoons? Let me check. Teaspoons, three quarters teaspoon of nutmeg. Here we go. All right. Oh crap! I forgot to put the whisk back on. Hold on. I think that should be good. Now I have to clear a space so we can roll out the dough and stuff. Just one moment. All right, here we go. So we're supposed to take the dough and roll it out into rectangles. So let's see how that goes. Okay, I mean that seems pretty rolled out. I think I'm gonna just cut it into a rectangle? Maybe that's what we'll do. Hold on. How thick are rolls supposed to be? Okay, here we go. I'm ready. I've got um, the spreads. So we're gonna spread some on this on this roll of hmm. So, the cinnamon buns are in the oven, now we're going to move on to the glaze. Step number one, two cups of powdered sugar. Now this whisk is in the way, hold on. Ah! Okay, what else? Oh, um, a half cup of cream cheese. Don't know how I'm going to get this out. figure out how to cook without getting ingredients all over myself. A half cup of butter. Alright, I almost forgot. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Alright, let's see how it goes. pretty good so now we just gotta wait for the cinnamon buns to come out of the oven all right so the cinnamon rolls look okay I think I didn't roll them tight enough they look like a bit of a hot mess but uh, I'm gonna put the glaze on now so hold on one moment Ta-da! Cinnamon buns! So, uh... Ah! Sorry about that. Cameras. Hold on. Hello. Uh, so cinnamon buns are done, but Justin's not home, so we're gonna have to wait so that people can eat them. And probably we should let them cool anyway, because they're so hot that they're melting the frosting. But they look good, so we'll see. Later! Hello, Justin. I have not eaten in five hours. That's funny, because it took me about five hours to make these. Convenient. Oh, we're just going to dive right in. Hey, disembodied mom, do you want one? <laughs> Thank you. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. You know what? The cinnamon's a bit much. Yeah, there's too much cinnamon. Mmm. It is a little intense. Dang it! I thought I'd done so well. No! Wow. Thumbs down from the abstract concept for cooking. You're on the right track, but I think there's room for improvement. I agree. I mean, you guys, this video, I started editing it while I was waiting for you to come home, and it's going to be like 20 minutes long. This video was a bit much. There were so many steps. Plus, there was that incident where the bowl got stuck in the mixer. Well, this has been a very disappointing episode of Julia vs. the Abstract Concept of Cooking. I agree. Should we do the end screen? We forgot to do the end screen last time. Nope, you're not. Oh, not. sorry, was that the signal? That was the signal. Alright, alright, do it again. And screen! screen.